A lot of times in our community, where uh, grandma and auntie be sitting on the porch in the Section 8 communities where ain't no fathers around, and they'll be teaching the younger women, go out and get your boyfriend, try him out. If you don't like him, go find another. That's prostituting your daughter. How many husbands should a woman have in, in her lifetime? One. One. But most of our women in our community have three, four, five, six baby daddies. You had a uh, sincere uh, conversation with me over to the side. Get Leviticus 1929. This is your job as a mother and what you have to do. You got two beautiful daughters that just learned today that they're Israelites, that they learned that they are princesses. But now you have to be in place to teach them the things that are necessary. They're not going to understand it fully, but it's your job to subject yourself to the Bible so that you can give that information over to them, right? Leviticus 19, 29. I want to show you something, okay? Read. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Bring it out. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Now, do we have a lot of our women who are showing themselves in social media as prostitutes? Dressing like <laughs> prostitutes, right? But watch this. The, most children have access to social media, don't they? And they are influenced by those people who are showing their cleavage, that are showing their thighs, they're showing their body, and that's what they want to become. But that's not how most of our parents raised us. But guess what? All of that mentality goes right back to slavery where our women were beaten, raped, pillaged, children taken away from, it, it all goes back to that, that we learned in slavery. So God has given us an instruction so we don't have to have a slave mindset anymore. He says, do not what? Do not prostitute thy daughter. So that goes into how our young women dress, or how our women dress, period. The women of our nation should not dress like prostitutes or whores or harlots. Why? Because now they have become a token of pleasure rather than having a, a, a sense of respect, you understand, over them, looming over them. And that respect goes back to your nation. Do not prostitute thy daughter. And watch this, read that again, because there's something else outside of dress, read. Do not prostitute thy daughter. That goes into having boyfriends. You know, a lot of times in our community, where grandma and auntie be sitting on the porch in the Section 8 communities where ain't no fathers around, and they'll be teaching the younger women, go out and get your boyfriend, try him out. If you don't like him, go find another. That's prostituting your daughter. How many husbands should a woman have in, in her lifetime? One one but most of our women in our community have three four five six baby daddies no kind of stability in our community no kind of stability in the household the woman crazy the man crazy and guess who else could get crazy after that the children and they create a whole nother generation of crazy ass people right right but that comes from prostituting daughters Do the women actually reflect the nobility of our people they talking about the women ain't getting no respect from the men. Well, damn it, if the men would keep God's laws, the women would reflect our nobility as a people. So right. read it again from the top. Read. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. None of the women in our nation, the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, none of our women should be classified as whores. Right. None of our women. If we're really going to be men and stand on the word of God, none of our women should be whores, baby mamas, uh, 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 got all kind of chlamydia, gonorrhea, all this foolishness because of whoredom. Read on. Lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. When it says the land becomes full of wickedness, the land has become full of wickedness because they use our people as influences of evil and wickedness. You, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you back. How old are you, sis? 29. 29. My brother right here. How old are you? Yeah, you. 37. I, I'm, I'm going to take y'all back. Y'all remember back in the day on BET, Black, Inter, Black Entertainment Television, where you used to wait till 3 o'clock in the morning to watch BET what? Uncut. <laughs> right? And what has happened is, BET is no longer owned by people who look like us. Right. BET is now owned by our oppressor. 
And even during that time where BET Uncut was a thing, where most teenagers, because I was a teenager at that time, trying to stay up or take a nap just to wake up to see BET Uncut. That goes into prostituting daughters, because guess what they did with that television network? They made it profitable for black women, Hispanic women, Native American women to be exploited for their beauty. Right. Their beauty had been exploited. And guess what? As men, we co-signed on it. We endorsed it. We fell into that trap of our lust and to our sin. And we didn't even realize we were breaking God's laws of prostituting our own sisters and daughters. And nowadays, we don't see it as much, but some of our own little daughters wind up missing. Matter of fact, there was a girl in Columbia. I, I remember the last name being Amenhotep. Uh, Saida Omenotep, she ended up missing and she got found dead. But the imagery of that missing young lady at 15, 16 years old was a very promiscuous, provocative looking imagery. But that's how our young women are taught to uh, uh, advertise themselves. That's what they're taught. But what is God saying as a solution? As men, women, and children of the nation of Israel, how do we solve that problem? By following God's laws. Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter. We can solve that problem by not prostituting our daughter. Right. We have to learn God's discipline enough to where we can protect ourselves and our people, our own children, our own household, our nation. You understand that? Get Deuteronomy 22 and 5 because this is a part of not prostituting your daughter. If you ain't, if you ain't selling your daughter, don't advertise her. Right. I noticed that your daughters, they, they in their youth, they don't know no better. They wear what you buy them, right? They have on the short shorts, okay? You, you say your daughter was 8 and 10, correct? So they're about to start growing, right? Let's just keep it real. Our, our children grow up faster because of that messed up food. But then what are they trying to do? They're trying to get our children to grow so that they can use them and abuse them in this today's society. So read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 12. Uh -huh. The women shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So here's another law that is going to govern the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. God says that women of this nation, if they want to be seen in their real beauty, their godly beauty, they want to be seen in their nobility, their royalty. God says that the women of this nation that are humble and seek his laws, they will not wear that which pertains to men. What article of clothing actually pertains to men, sis? Okay, it, it does go into revealing, but my sister right here in the car, what what type of clothing do women wear that actually pertain to men? What kind of clothing? Yes. Are women wearing now that actually pertain to men? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on for a quick second. Just real quick. Let's see. Say it again. Yes. Oh, watch this. I'm going to make it simple. Y'all can help me out. When you're going into the restroom, how do you know what restroom to go into? Because of the sign. Because of the sign. What's on the sign? It's a female and a man. A woman? How do you know it's a woman? The design and what's on the design? We're playing merry-go-round right now. The skirt. The skirt den denotes whether it is a man or a woman. Because the man is wearing what on his sign? Pants. Pants. Now why? It's a stick. Here she go being smart. Watch this. This is why, as the man, it will look like his clothes are form-fitting. Get Exodus 28 and 42. This is why... There's a difference between how men dress and women dress, or even according to God's law. Watch this. This is why it looks like it's a stick figure. Exodus 48. I'm at 28. The book of Exodus chapter 28 and verse 42. Uh -huh. And thou shalt make them little breeches. Breeches. We call it breeches here in the South. What is breeches? Huh? Pants. 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 Yes, because watch this. Even for a sister wearing the leggings. Or, or so-called tights, it's supposed to be undergarments. You are very correct. It's supposed to be undergarments. So watch this. Did you just hear how we clarified it according to God? What you have on right now is actually underwear. Right. You see that? Read on. 
to cover their nakedness. To cover their nakedness. Read on. From the loins, even unto the thighs, they shall reach. Go ahead. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons. Aaron is Moses' brother. And Aaron had sons, and God said, as your royal clothing, as men, my priest, you are to wear linen breeches, pants. Aaron and his sons, not the women. The sisters, go back to Deuteronomy 22 and 5, should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right. Because with the attire that God gives his men and women, there's a spirit that comes with it. That's right. You understand that? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 4. Uh -huh. The women shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Because when women start to wear manly attire, they take on a manly spirit. Right. Y'all ever heard the euphemism that says, who wears the pants in this household? Right. Shouldn't nobody else be wearing the pants but the daddy right. or the yeah. son, so right? My sister, my sister church, and she go to uh -huh. like the women. You can't come in there with pants and wear long skirts. You got to wear long skirts. That's, that's according to God's commandment. Now right. read the next part because it goes into confusion. But when we prostitute our daughters and the land falls to hold them, confusion reigns and our women are actually outside in their underwear. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What happens when a man starts wearing women's clothing? Yeah, uh-huh. You saw the face? The face said it all. He start looking just like that. He gets effeminate. He gets effeminate. And he starts to change his lifestyle to be homosexual, transsexual. He cuts off his rod. Now they have a new surgery where they cut it, flip it, twist it inside out. And now our men, uh, matter, matter of fact, you can go on a local food line and see two or three of them. And no, I'm dead serious. I was in food line yesterday before the Sabbath, and two or three of them, effeminate, got the hair of a uh, weave in their head with, with a five o'clock shadow yep. and big ass hands. Right. The land has fallen to confusion. Read the last part. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So God says that thing is disgusting. So the same way seeing a man with a wig on, big ass hands, and eyelashes on, he looks at women wearing pants the same way. Right. He looks at it the same way. Right. But what we're doing is reforming our heart to what God's opinion is and not what society has given us throughout slavery. You understand that? That is the only way we're going to be able to fix our community. Stop with the BS and actually do what God says. Matter of fact, get Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. Because everybody goes to church because of the terrible conditions we live in. Everybody going to church trying to get a blessing. Everybody going to the pastor looking for prosperity, but the pastor says God's laws are done away with. They're trying to get a fix. You're right. But we need to get our mind fixed on God's commandments. Read that real quick. The book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Go ahead. The, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the what? This book of the law. The law. What we were just reading in Deuteronomy 28 is a law of God, how his children should dress. Right. We just read out of Leviticus 19.29 that as a nation we should not prostitute our daughters by putting them in that type of attire. That goes into prostitution. That, that, that might be a societal doctrine. Because if I get sleepy at right. that wheel right. and I got uh, my wife on the side, hey, sis, you need to drive so we right. can keep going. That, that's a society. But I understand there's a certain, I, I, you probably talking about more so chivalry, right? But what has happened is the chivalry of our men has been made docile throughout slavery. You understand that? And we've departed from the laws of God. Therefore, we don't have that masculine, that bravery, that masculinity that God instilled in us for our women to understand and support. So we're going back to that. Read that again. The book of what? The book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. Read. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's what has happened in our community. We no longer talk about the laws of God. Our pastors who've given us that fix aren't talking about the laws of God. But thou shalt meditate therein, day and night. So the only way that we can come out to teach our people is by meditating on these laws day in and day out to teach you. Read on. Right. Read. 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Uh -huh. For then thou shalt make the way prosperous. So if we're looking for prosperity, it's only through God's laws. Right. We don't. And then thou shalt have good success. And that's where our success is as a people. Right. In God's laws. That's it right. goes down to what we eat, how we dress, how we think. How we treat one another, and then ultimately how we defend ourselves against the warfare that's against our people. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Oh, my.